This should be an interesting topic, but we're going to go back to this because we've done Purdue previews and recaps in the last two days where we did not mention this. And I think this is compelling enough to have a real conversation about. So after Painter's, um, I, I don't know if this was the loss or if this was just after their win against Iowa. I, I, I think it was after the win against Iowa. Okay, so there was basically a press conference where Painter took to the podium and was asked, what have you seen from, um, like, after the loss to Northwestern? What have you seen? And I actually want to try and pull up the audio on this so that we can run it uh, because it was really interesting. I don't have it ready, so I need to find it. I was going to do you have I was going to scroll up to it. I have it now. Here we go. All right. This is Matt Painter talking uh I'm just going to I'm going to play it. This is Matt Painter. Like it's really stupid for us <laughs> like this is it's plagued us but it's plagued. So when people say like oh they just lose the kind of the same way it's it's really stupid and you don't understand basketball if you say that. Like it's really stupid. Um because it's just such an un, coming from such an untrained eye, you know, because the other team is trying to turn you over. Like everybody has an issue with turnovers. Every team has an issue with turnovers in some game this year. So when you play eight games and like you have a couple games, like whatever, like you're 80%, you're 75%, whatever it might be, is you've taken care of the basketball. But you're going to have a game in there where you don't. You just don't want it to be when it matters the most. And so for us, like it's – the execution of the for us like all right so that's the quote um little choppy there on how i rolled that out bear with me what do we make of this quote this is how i'll tee this up painter all off season starting the moment the season ended last year to fairly dickinson hit the podium all the lights are on him it, it was one of the more impressive podium press conference performance i've ever seen in the moment because he He's talked openly, he talked pointedly, he talked honestly, he was vulnerable, and he basically put a lot of the blame on himself. He was like, I need to reevaluate everything. I need to reevaluate the way I build these teams. I need to reevaluate if I am part of this problem. And then he kept that narrative going all offseason. Like anytime you could find a microphone in front of this guy, it was like, well, yeah, I know. I know I've made mistakes. I know we need changes. We're making the changes. It's going to be different for Purdue this season. And then you get one loss. You're one loss in to this season. After a great start to the year, by the way. Don't, don't act like I'm not giving Painter credit here. But you're one loss in, and instantly you're getting real defensive here. Getting real. You just don't know basketball. You're just stupid. If you're trying to say because we lost to Northwestern, a loss, by the way, which had many of the same elements to the losses they had last year in the biggest moments, namely Braden Smith not knowing what planet he's on. <laughs> like that, that was the largest one. Stupid mistakes from your backcourt was what lost you games in March and now lost you a game against Boo Booey. Um, I I don't like this look from Painter, and I'm just kind of confused by it. What do you make of this? Yeah, I'm I'm very confused by it because in my eyes, I honestly would have even respected it more if Painter was like, I mean, yeah, some sometimes old habits like that can still, you know, uh, what do you what do you call kind of rear rear their ugly head, I guess it was, but like it doesn't make it doesn't make it known that that'll happen for the rest of the season. But the fact that he was very defensive in this and also also lying, because <laughs> like you mentioned. The loss, I think, to Northwestern did have some similarities to what plagued them down the stretch last year and in that loss to Fairleigh Dickinson. So um, I I don't think it's a good sign for Purdue, to be honest with you, because as much as you want to acknowledge and take like what happened last year head on, you also got to somewhat at some point put it behind you. And to me, this had the feelings of a press conference of something that like it keeps them up at night that this happened last season. And obviously it should because it was an embarrassing loss. But at the same time, letting last year's downfall at the certain points of Fairleigh Dickinson seep into this season and have it be like that 
monkey that's on your back, I think can kind of affect play and affect the team mentally. And it's after one loss at Northwestern, and this is happening too. And Coach Painter's pulling out the you you don't know ball. Like, come on, man. That's crazy. One loss, and we're already going to the you don't know ball. I love Matt Painter. That's the thing. Like, I I do I, too. I do too. I didn't expect this out of paint. As a guy, he is arguably my favorite coach. The, him and Brad Underwood. I know they're very different people, but like those are just two guys I like as people, and I'm gonna root for those guys. I think Painter's great for the sport. I think he's always been honest. He's a good interview. Uh, I think he does things the right way. I want to see this guy win. I just disagree so much with what he's trying to do here. And I agreed with so much of what he was saying in the off season, where he was taking a lot of the blame and saying, we need to make changes. And I I thought that was a refreshing, honest approach that I could really get behind. So for him to lose one game and now suddenly say the people criticizing this are stupid. I I don't get where he's coming from. I have some numbers, by the way. Um, look, was, was the Northwestern loss identical to the Fairleigh Dickinson loss? Absolutely not. No, it was not. Uh, Nor- Northwestern had a superstar. Namely, that was the biggest thing. Boo Booey was incredible in this game. Fairleigh Dickinson didn't have anyone like that. You should win the Fairleigh Dickinson game way more than you should win a game against Northwestern where Boo Booey goes for 31 points. But there are similarities here that come down to the way Matt Painter designs his basketball team. And if, if, certain guys don't change they are going to be vulnerable to losing games like this where the numbers look like this in the fairly dickinson loss cart they had 16 turnovers in the northwestern loss they had 17 turnovers Braden smith was responsible for seven of the 16 turnovers against fairly dickinson Braden smith was responsible for six of the 17 turnovers against northwestern as a team from three in the fairly dickinson game Purdue made five three-pointers on 26 attempts against Northwestern. Purdue made five three-pointers on 19 attempts. And the biggest thing, everybody left the Fairleigh Dickinson game being like, guys won't shoot from three. Every, everybody curled up into a ball and was afraid to shoot. They shot less three-pointers in the game against Northwestern than they did in the Fairleigh Dickinson game. Made the same amount. So I don't know how you can – have those things be true you lost a game where your backcourt imploded where the moment got too big where in various ways last year it was guys afraid to shoot guys a little hesitant Braden trying to do too much against Northwestern Braden Smith and Lance Jones both tried to do too much and both were disasters down the stretch Lance Jones fouls out needlessly Braden Smith flipping the ball into the third row or straight to a Northwestern breakaway like (laughs) that is a consistent theme and it's not stupid for people to point that out. And I, I've just never viewed Matt Painter as a guy who gets defensive. And that's what I saw here in this press conference was for the first time in his career, he is being super defensive. And I don't love that from him. I think the vibes are weird. And you you know what, you know what that means when you get defensive, that means you're on edge. And I don't think, and I don't think it it means, I don't think it, I don't think that it does any good for Purdue as a team to be that on edge because a team that plays on edge is a team that, oh shit, in the last four minutes of a game, flashbacks. I don't want to make the same mistakes as last year, overthinking things. That is a very real option that could happen when teams are on edge. And like I said, you don't want to forget what happened. You do want to use it as a motivator Everyone in Purdue circles talks about how this team recognizes and acknowledges what happened last year and uses it as a motivating factor to be great this season. But there is a negative side to that if you can't let it go at a certain point. And it causes teams to be on edge or players to play on edge or coaches to be on edge that can seep into a program. So it's it's very interesting to me. And so I'm going to keep my eye on uh, and say what you want. I know people are like, oh, shit, you're just going to keep your eye on this because of one post-game press conference? I mean, yeah, I am. Because I I think that this has the signs of a team that is defensive and on edge. Well, I, that's the other thing is, like, he's trying to make the point on turnovers that's like, turnovers happen. Like, teams turn the ball over in some games. Like, the, every team is going to try and force us into turnovers. The problem with those statements are that in my opinion, Braden Smith's turnovers in this game were pretty unforced. 
Like <laughs> it wasn't something that Northwestern was doing to cause Braden Smith into those issues. This was Braden Smith picking the wrong time to try to throw a behind the head, no look pass. And that is the same thing. He got wound up. He was just, he lost his brain. And Braden Smith is one of the smartest players in the country. But at the end of last season, in the biggest moments, he was not. He, he You couldn't trust him. And that came back for the only time we've seen it this season. It came back against Northwestern. And if Painter wants to sit at a podium and tell us that's not something to worry about, there's no similarities there, I just strongly disagree with that. And maybe he's doing it to protect Braden. Maybe he's doing it to protect his team, but uh, it just, it was very out of, I don't want to say character. That's something we've never seen Painter do before. We haven't seen Matt Painter get defensive like this. And uh, for a team that just won the Maui Invitational, for a team that has this program humming, I don't think it would have been that bad to just be like, yeah, we saw some of those things we're scared of and we need to fix that instead of make excuses for it and criticize people's ball knowledge because Braden Smith was, a dis- I don't get it. I just don't get it. All right. Um, I'm I'm curious to see what Purdue fans are going to think of that segment. We'll see. 